look what I got. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm using a, I'm recording this with a Mobius action cam uh, with the field of view set at narrow. Um, I'm not sure if the video is probably 720p. But anyways, uh, if you can't see the outside of the box because of the glare or it's dark in here, this is a Rock Island Armory gun that I got last night. Um, and it is in uh, <clears throat> M1911A1 in 9mm. Um, it is a medium size or commander size gun uh, with G10 grips. This has all the options. Hold on a second. Oh, I misspoke. It doesn't have all the options. It has all the options, but the uh, it doesn't have rails. It doesn't come with much, um, and plus there's plenty of other videos showing the unboxing of these things, so I'm not going to really get into what's in the box. Uh, it did have a couple of uh, manuals, uh, pamphlets, and things like that that I put aside. You know, I, I store all, the, all of those in one spot. Um, huh. It comes with a 10 round magazine. I thought it was a nine round the one in the chamber, but this is a ten round magazine. Okay, that's cool. I'm not gonna argue with that. Um, the ad where I bought the gun, I bought it from Gun Genie. Um, it was it showed that uh it said that uh it was a nine round magazine. But I know these can use interchange, you know, they can use various mags without issue. But uh, this gun is, uh, is actually, it's already cleared. It's got the uh, chamber stop inside, so I'm going to take it out. Uh, don't really see the need to actually do a, a chamber and a safety check on this since the chamber block was in. But we'll do it anyways. There you go, it's open, no magazine in there. There's no rounds in the magazine. So looking at this gun, <clears throat> this is a decent, this is a decent gun for the price. Uh, on Gun Genie, I bought this for right at 500 bucks. Uh, there are cheaper ones, but uh, again, I got, I got this. Uh, it was pretty much fully optioned, with the exception of the rail on the bottom. Um, has everything else. There are blemishes. Um, this is a brand new gun. I took it out of the, the oil bag. Um, when I, when I picked it up yesterday to inspect it before I actually signed the paperwork at the gun store, I actually, uh, I, I saw that it was, it never been taken out. Um, but it's got a couple of blemishes, it looks like, from, from the factory or packing. There's one there. Um, is, is there anything on this side? A couple of the, the areas where there's, you know, there's edges looks like there's some rubbing or some type of uh, I guess paint rubbing off it's parkerized um, and of course I'm already developing idiot marks um, let me see I believe there's some right under the uh, takedown pin the handle thought I saw some that were on the slide where where you break it down but I'm not seeing it now but yeah I took it apart a couple of times last night one just to kind of get a feel for how it breaks down and then again uh, afterwards I you know after I put it back together I took it apart again to actually clean the weapon um, this thing I'm gonna have to get used to that because uh, <clears throat> There are certain things I'm not used to. So on the full size, you can take this apart just by pressing down and, and, and taking out that, uh, I don't know what it's called, uh, there's like a brace or, or a piece that, uh, a bevel. So you take that out and you can break it down. This one is different. Where you can take the slide off, but in order to remove this uh, recoil rod, you have to use like a uh, a paper clip, you bend it, poke it into a hole that's in there, and uh, it'll it'll come out. Um, 
the easy part is breaking it down. The hard part is getting it back together. The hardest part in getting it back together is putting this back into place because there's a pin here between this and this. It's actually on, on this, uh, I don't know what this, this is called, this is a rod here. But it's got like a pin, and you might be able to see it in the camera. It's got a pin right in between it. A lot of times uh, it's hard to get that aligned properly. And if you don't get that line properly, this, this takedown pin is going to lock up. You won't be able to remove it, you won't be able to push it in further. Um, and if the slide, you know, when you do that, when, you, when you're putting it in, you got to kind of match up this notch with this notch up here on the on the on the takedown uh, handle and when you uh, I guess when you do it not only this locks up but the slide locks up and the only way to get it out is to get something to pry under the the, the takedown handle and, and, and to pull it up and as you can see I need to be careful here because I've already got wear from where I was you know, trying to take it up with the, uh, pull it up with the, uh, with the screwdriver. Um, get a, a thick cotton, cotton cloth that, that'll minimize the damage or get something like a, uh, a soft, uh, soft metal screwdriver. Something that's not going to damage even like a plastic coated or a plastic dipped, uh, screwdriver tip. In fact, that's what I might do. I might just go and buy a couple of cheap screwdrivers just for the, you know, for my, my gun kit and plastic dip the tips so that when I take off things such as grips, I don't mar anything. But yeah, uh, part of that might be due to the, the parkerizing. I hear a lot of people complaining about the fact that the parkerizing uh, scratches easily. Um, but hey, it, you know, guns are tools. And I don't mind. I don't mind wear. Um, I'd rather wear this out than wear out my P uh, two twenty, you know, Equinox. So uh, there's some more wear right there. If you notice, uh, this gun has a, a fiber optic uh, front sight, uh, dovetailed, and there is wear on the top of the metal part, uh, I guess, of the front sight. Um, Looks like the parkerizing is wearing off. Maybe it was uh, rubbing against this this foam uh, in transit. And if that's the case, that means <laughs> this is this parkerizing uh, this parkerized coating is way too soft if it's doing that for foam to kind of rub it off. But uh, this is a nine mil. Um, this the paperwork. What did I do with the paperwork? Uh, it's not here. Paperwork states, let me see if I got the computer page, page still up. Yes, I do. So the capacity says it's uh, 9 plus 1. That magazine is 10. That means this is a 10 plus 1 gun. Uh, whoa, the weight is 40 ounces. So, yeah, uh, these grips are G10 grips. They are extremely aggressive. In fact, you know, my wife and my, my daughters, they, that was their first comment. It was like, whoa, these grips, uh, not liking them. Um, they don't bother me so much because I know what a gun is and I, I have more experience handling guns than, than they do. But uh, it was, it's something that, you know, that's something to be said. Um, I have seen reviews where people are, you know, have been complaining about the aggressiveness of, the, of these grips. Um, So yeah, here's the, the barrel, the, the polishing of the chamber area. Um, on the older Rock Islands, they actually have a big banner that says Rock Island Armory here. I'm glad they did away with that because it looked kind of gaudy. They kind of shrunk everything down and placed like a one emblem on the gun right there. Nowhere else. So the gun side, the, the rear sights are uh, no back, two dots on the back. And I believe they're driftable, so they're adjustable. This front fiber optic, uh, it looks kind of beat up from the top, but it actually, the color kind of pops when, you, when, you're, when you're actually aiming. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. 
looks different looking at it this way than up on the top. It's got ambidextrous uh, manual safety. It is stiff. I'm hoping that'll kind of loosen up a bit over time. I know you don't want safeties loosening up to the point of where they engage easily, but uh, this is a uh, this is a bit more stiff than what I'm used to. This is actually the first gun I own that has a manual safety too. As well as it being my first 1911 ever. I don't even have experience shooting experience uh, shooting uh, 1911s. None whatsoever. About the only thing I've done is actually uh, hold them in gun stores. But I do, uh, you know, at one point I did not even desire a 1911. I couldn't stand them actually. Uh, the looks, the, but the heft, I like the heft. And uh, I actually bought another one that's on the way. Uh, if, if Bud's gun shop wakes up and gets off their butt and ships it, I'll have it. Um, it's a 45 uh, 1911. Uh, it is actually, it's not a uh, Rock uh, rock Island, it's a um, American Classic in commander size. Uh, that's, again, it's M45. Um, I wanted two variants. I wanted to, I know this is going to be a soft shooter because of the weight of the gun, not specifically because it's 9mm. So uh, it might even control the, uh, the, the muzzle lift. Um, that you know, because nine mils, they they can they tend to have certain traits that other guns don't. Um, they're not snappy, but they do have muzzle lift. I have a feeling that this is gonna kind of tame that down a bit because of the weight of this gun. Um, I got one in forty five because I wanted to kind of experiment and need both of these guns are priced to the point where I can experiment with low cost. If I don't like one or the other or both, I can sell them. 1911 platform uh, uh, guns uh, sell pretty decently. So, uh, so yeah. Um, but I'm kind of excited about getting that 45 in because that one is supposedly uh, it, both of these. This one and that one are both uh, Philippine-made guns. So uh, some people kind of harp on the quality and you know you, they get what you pay for type deal. Um, I'm not all about that. Guns are tools. Um, it doesn't have to be pretty for me to work. All it has to do is go bang. It has to be dependable. Uh, we're going to see if this one and the other one is depend are dependable. If so, they're keepers. But, <clears throat> all that being said, the, American, uh, the Metro Arms American Classic that I bought, that one is supposed to be, the finishing quality on that is supposed to be a step above this. So we'll see, because really, I thought that um, Arms Corps actually makes both of those guns. They're just different, uh, I guess, different uh, manufacturing lines, but Arms Corps does it all. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you know, leave comments in the videos or whatnot, but uh, that's from my understanding. But we'll see. Uh, the finish is not parkerized on that 45 that's on the way. Um, that one was cheaper than this one. Uh, I believe I paid 463 from Bud's Gun Shop on that. Um, I'm hoping I can get that within another week. It still hasn't even shipped yet, and it's, this is day four. I ordered this one and the, the Buzz Gun Shop uh, guns on the same night. I got this yesterday, so right at the top of three days maybe, maybe even less, I got this gun. And Buzz Gun Shop hasn't even shipped the other two guns yet. The other gun I got besides that 45 is an a 9mm uh, 6 hour uh, P320 in the carry version. I got that for 500 bucks. So I, I got a break on the price on that. 
so I'm not really gonna complain so much about you know Bud and Bud's gun shop and, and their lack of uh, shipping but uh, I have to say I might not order from them anymore because I just don't believe in paying giving them a thousand bucks and having your thousand bucks of product floating around you know in limbo until they decide that they're ready you know if it's not in stock or it, they have to wait for for the gun at a part to you know to, to get it that's fine you just communicate that figure out some way in the system to kind of automate that process because this is the internet age and when I order stuff from Amazon I know right off the bat if it's on back order or whatnot You know, I mean, even if Amazon, Amazon does that, even though they use different distributors. And I know Bud's does too. But I'm not, I'm not going to give Bud's a, uh, a past just because, you know, people say, oh, well, you got a good deal. You know what? Get with the times and actually uh, be competitive. This isn't bad. Some people don't like the fact that this protrudes. And this is not flush. That's probably where that 10 round magazine comes in. If it was 9, it would be flush, I believe. Uh, some people like them flush without the little plastic uh, base plate. This isn't bad to me. I'm not going to carry this. I don't have a carry license. I don't have time to get one before I move. So uh, I, might, I might get one just to say I have one. Uh, but... I don't know. We'll see. But the gun is good. Magazine drops nice. It's got an extended uh, magazine release. Magazine pops out really good. The magazine release is accurate. If you notice, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the trigger and the hammer are actually uh, sculpted out. This one isn't. This trigger is, is kind of loose. I need to figure out how to tighten that up. It's also adjustable. I think you can adjust kind of the take up a bit. There is some play here. And you know what? The trigger pull is crisp. I'm going to say that right now. It's very crisp. I have no idea where that came from. You notice it has the, the beaver tail and uh, grip safety. Not all of them have come with that. I like the fact that uh, these uh, these screws are uh, hex head. My other uh, my P uh, three twenty um, has actual actual screws uh, I can see that being problematic as you know one slip of the screwdriver and you're taking off a coat of varnish off of the wood grips I'm pretty sure I can replace those though if you look down on the bottom I don't know if you can see it it says uh, it says Philippines and it also says Parump Nevada that is uh, that is, that's where the importer is located, Rock Island. Action is smooth. Um, there is no, uh, there's no slide play. You can't hear anything. I can't feel anything wiggling. Actually, I can just a very, very little bit. None in the front. A tiny bit in the back. Um, you could see some gapping back here on one side, but not the other. So, just right at the top there, right above the rail. Um, that's not a huge deal. I know that the tolerances on these guns aren't as tight as, you know, the, 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 the one in $2,000 but... Uh, I didn't buy I didn't buy this gun for for the tight you know for the lack of tight tolerances or the tolerances. I just bought it so it can go bang. Um, but really, 
that's you know you have to look at it that if I compare this to a two thousand dollar nineteen eleven that's that's an apples and oranges comparison it really is that's like comparing a uh, a Honda Accord to uh, a top of the line Infiniti or or Audi. Um, that's just it's not fair it's not a fair comparison and I, I don't I don't do that if you notice here look at the barrel it's flared out in the, on the front I don't know what they call that I've heard the term I've heard the term bull barrel I don't know if that's what this is the uh, recoil guide rod it's full length. I've heard some people complain about that. Um, I think if it's half length, I might not have to worry about that uh, sticking a uh, a uh, what do you call it a, a paper clip into the rod to take it out. I I think that's the case, but I'm not sure. Um, some things that I might need to kind of be ready for is the recoil guide springs on the on the gun are. Uh, Sometimes people complain that uh, they lose their, their springiness and they have to be replaced. Um, so I watch out for that. And they say it happens pretty soon, like within like less than a thousand rounds. Um, so I'll, I'll keep an eye for the, out for that. Uh, I like the grip, so I'm going to keep them unless they start really eating into me, into my hands. Um, and even so, uh, they're, they're keepers for me, so even if I decide to get another set for looks, these will just stay in the box, and I'll swap them out from time to time. But yeah, so far I'm happy with the gun. I have not shot it yet. I plan on taking it to the range. I've got a TW25B on the rails. Not sure. No, nope, can't see it. But it's sliding across those those rails really nice. Feels really good. When I rack the slide, it feels a little bit different than uh well all my all my other guns are well, my two other guns are poly and then there's the the Equinox, which is not. Um, that thing's a beast. The spring on that is like almost too, uh, I have problems actually racking that thing. So they're, they're, it's stiff, and uh, maybe I just need to keep uh, racking the slide and and uh, <clears throat> putting rounds through it. I don't even have that many rounds through it, probably less than 200. Um, but it, those springs are super stiff, and I'm hoping that that 45 uh, 9 mil that I I mean, not uh, my 45 1911 is coming in. I hope it's not as stiff. But uh, this one, super easy to pull, even more so than my uh, <clears throat> my poly guns. But yeah.